It was. Mary, Mary, sparrow on the leaves so green, a happy blossom sees a swift as arrow. Mary, Mary, sparrow on the leaves so green, a happy blossom sees a swift as arrow. Sing a prayer of in my Don't risk.
Shri Shri Mataji, we bow down to Her Holiness Shri Mataji Nirmala Devi. It's uh, the glorious year of the 100th birthday of uh, Shri Mataji. Today is also William Blake's birthday and we are celebrating that according to tradition started by Shri Mataji, who started this tradition really of celebrating William Blake's birthday. In those days in England, not many people would celebrate William Blake's birthday. But uh, somehow the tradition mother started has spread. And nowadays in England, in England, lots of people are celebrating William Blake's birthday. Uh, this year, something else happened is that uh, in Romanian, they also are having a big celebration of William Blake. And uh, they are using the same uh, Blake exhibition that we used here at uh, Sri Adi Shakti Puja at the uh, UK National Centre. So they translated uh, the exhibition to Romanian and they are having a 12-day program about William Blake there. Now, to extend William Blake's celebration over a, a period of days, which is it's a very interesting concept. And uh, in a sense, Sri Mataji did the same because some years Sri Mataji would um, celebrate William Blake's birthday just a few days before or maybe a few days after, not necessarily on the actual day always of William Blake's birthday. But uh, the one thing Shri Mataji always did was to invite everybody. It was not only for Saj Yogis. It was uh, for everybody. It was for the public as well. And Shri Mataji would uh, give realization to everybody. And then usually there was something special. Shri Mataji would give a very strong um, prophetic vision of William Blake explaining that to us and our responsibility because we are here in this country where he prophesied this would become the new Jerusalem. And then Shri Mataji would give us our own vision of uh, the blossom time for the whole universe, not just in England. So this building of Jerusalem, when Mother explains it, it's a, a very serious, important message to do with uh, giving realization to everybody, which is mainly the topic today we are going to look at is the building of Jerusalem, which means to give realization to everybody. And then for the Saj Yogis themselves to become better Saj Yogis and really become experts in all the aspects of Saj Yoga. So this year's celebration, as it started, I would say, two days ago at uh, Porchester Hall, it was a very good way of... Uh, keeping up this uh, tradition that Sri Mataji started. So it's a wonderful thing to see that in Romania they are doing such a wonderful exhibition about William Blake. And uh, today we are going to watch um, Sri Mataji's uh, Sri Bhairavanath Puja of 1989. There'll be some meditation, there'll be a few extra items of celebration of Blake's birthday. So I would ask now Nitin to play the Sri Bhairavanath Puja, please. Today we have gathered here to do <coughs> Puja to Bhairavanath. I think we have not understood the <coughs> significance of Bhairavnath, who runs and up and down on the Iranadi. Hoji, can I make the translation, Shimadaji? Please. Yes. Hoji, ci siamo qui riuniti per celebrare il puja. A Sri Bhairavanath e forse non abbiamo com compreso appieno il significato il, della funzione di Bhairavanath che va su e giù per l'Idanadi. Idanadi is the Nadi of Chandrama, is of the moon. Idanadi è il canale di Chandrama, cioè della luna. So, <coughs> this is 
a channel for us to cool down. Quindi questo canale è lì perché possa rinfrescarci. So the work of Bhairavnaji is <coughs> to cool us down. Quindi il suo lavoro, il lavoro di Bhairav Nathji, è per rinfrescarci. For example, people have a hot temper with their ego, with their liver, whatever it is. Per esempio, certa gente è, ehm, ci sono persone colleriche a causa dell'ego, a causa del fegato. And <coughs> if a person is in a big temper, then Bhairavnath plays tricks on that person e to cool him down. E quindi se una persona è molto collerica, Bhairavnath eh, gioca, gli gioca dei trucchi per rinfrescarlo. Uh, he organizes everything under his own control with Gana's help, with Ganapati's help to cool down your temperament to give you a balance. E quindi lui organizza tutto con l'aiuto dei ganas e degli angeli per eh, tiene tutto sotto il suo controllo per rinfrescarci. So if somebody is a very hot tempered person and he crosses all the limits of his temper then some or other Bhairavnath will organize also with the help of Anumana to show that this stupidity of anger is no good. Per esempio, se questa persona, se c'è una persona che va oltre i limiti dell'ego nella sua collera, nel suo temperamento collerico, Bhairavnath, insieme anche all'aiuto di Anumana, organizza le cose in modo tale per mostrargli quanto sia stupido essere così. So, for example, people who are depressed or who become left-sided, Hanumana tries uh, uh, to help them to come out of it, no doubt. But also Bhairavnath uh, helps them very much more to come out of it. Per esempio, eh, per quanto riguarda le persone invece di lato sinistro che sono più depresse, naturalmente vengono aiutate molto da Hanumana, ma soprattutto vengono aiutate da Bhairavnath. Now a person who is left-sided cannot be collective. Per esempio, una persona che è di lato sinistro non può essere collettiva. It is very difficult for a person who is very left-sided, who is uh, all the time feeling very sad, unhappy, and worried, cannot enjoy the fun of collectivity. Per esempio, se una persona è molto di lato sinistro, sempre triste, depressa, o preoccupata, questa persona avrà difficoltà a essere nella collettività, a gioire della collettività. While a hot-tempered person, right-sided person, does not enjoy any collectivity, doesn't allow anybody to enjoy collectivity, no doubt, but tries to be in the collective that he can assert. Invece una persona di lato destro, una persona di tipo collerico, è non permetterà a nessuno di gioire della collettività, però amerà stare, cercherà di stare nella collettività per potersi mettere in mostra. Because such a person tries to show the superiority is something superior. Naturally he cannot enjoy Perché the collective. E questa persona non può gioire naturalmente della collettività, però cercherà la collettività per mostrare agli altri in un certo senso la sua superiorità. On the contrary, the person who is depressed all the time thinks uh, nobody loves me, nobody cares for me, I'm so depressed, this, that. All the time expecting from others something also cannot enjoy the collective. Invece la persona di lato sinistro 
pensa sempre ma io non, non valgo niente, nessuno, nessuno si occupa di me, cerca sempre che qualcuno lo aiuti nella collettività e così anche lei non gioisce della collettività. Such a left-sided person will find everything is something uh, unhappy. E questo tipo di persona trova sempre che tu trova sempre la scusa di essere infelice in qualsiasi situazione. Like the other day I went to Moscow. There was a lady with us who was a sajobini. Left-sided sajobini. Per esempio l'altro giorno ero a Mosca e c'era una signora che era una saggia yogini ed era un tipo left side. So uh, we went to have our food and it started raining and they couldn't get a taxi. E allora eravamo andati per, a mangiare da qualche parte e allora ha iniziato a piovere e così nessuno poteva prendere il taxi. But then a car came in and we went there. E poi arrivò un'automobile e così siamo potuti andare. Then the, uh, they said that you are very late so you have to sit on the other side. You have to take the seats which were more expensive. Ah, e così gli dissero, ma eh, vedete voi siete in ritardo e allora dovete sedervi in un altro posto dove è più caro. So this lady started saying, what all problems, no taxi, it is raining and we can't get a seat. E allora questa signora ha cominciato a dire, ma guarda quanti problemi, non abbiamo preso il taxi, com ha cominciato a piovere, non troviamo neanche il posto a sedere. I said this is all fun. This is not something a problem. This problem our world should be given up. E Shimadeji disse: "No, ma questo è tutto per divertimento, non è un vero problema. Questa parola problema deve essere proprio eliminata." This is a new word I have learned because problem we used to use only for geometry in our <laughs> Young age. Questa parola, problema, è, una, è stata una parola nuova per me quando sono venuta in Occidente perché quando ero piccola la usavamo soltanto per i problemi di geometria. Now, this sort of a attitude, negative attitude, to find everything negative is the way we really spoil our left side. Adesso questo, questa strana attitudine di vedere tutto eh, il negativo di vedere la negatività dappertutto anche but then a gentleman who had invited us came and he said we are sitting on the other side waiting for you e quindi questa attitudine rovina il lato sinistro veramente ma poi cosa successe accadde che è venuto un signore e dice ma noi stavamo seduti dall'altra parte e vi stavamo aspettando so we went to the other side enjoyed nice food everything was fine She said, see now, you were only counting how many negative things there are. E, e così Shirmataji disse a questa signora, ma vedi, hai, hai visto tutte queste cose negative, invece tutto è andato bene. And you were not seeing the fun. Quindi contavi soltanto le cose negative che succedevano senza vedere il divertimento. So she asked me, what should I do? I said, you take Bhairava's name. E allora lei mi chiese, allora che dovrei fare? E Shimadaji disse, di il nome di Shri Bhairava. Sit with your left hand towards the photograph and right hand on the mother earth. And that's how all your boots of negativity will go away. E siediti con la mano sinistra verso la fotografia e con la mano destra sulla madre terra ed è così che tutti i tuoi boots se ne scapperanno. So Bhairava is, always has a light in his hand, always light in his hand. E quindi vedete che Bhairava è sempre rappresentato con una luce nella mano. And he runs up and down. Yeah. Uh, Iranari, to make light for you to see that there's nothing negative. E corre su e giù per l'idanadi con una luce per farvi vedere che tutto è a posto, non c'è niente di negativo. And this negativity comes to us by many ways. Questa negatività viene a noi in molti modi. One of the uh, negativities are that this is mine. Una delle negatività è quella che ci fa pensare questo è mio. Like my child, my husband, uh, 
my property, my. Per esempio, mio figlio, mio marito, la mia proprietà, tutto mio. So then, you see, once you get attached in this manner, what you find that your children also become negative. Quando voi rimanete attaccati in questa maniera, voi vi accorgete che poi anche i vostri figli diventano negativi. But if you want to be positive, it is very easy. Ma se voi volete essere positivi, è molto semplice. And for that you should see where is your attention. E per raggiungere questo voi dovreste vedere dov'è la vostra attenzione. Are you only seeing problema or you are seeing some fun in it? State vedendo soltanto i problemi oppure state vi state accorgendo anche del divertimento che questo crea? There are people who cannot make fun out of anything. Ci sono persone che non sanno divertirsi a niente. If it's a sunny day, they'll cry, oh God, what a sunny day. <laughs> <laughs> Se è un giorno di sole, cominciano a piangere, dicono, mamma mia, che sole. <laughs> And if it is a... Uh, uh, Day with clouds, they'll say, oh, what a day. <laughs> Se ci sono le nuvole, invece dicono, ah, ci sono le nuvole, che giornata. Nothing can please them. E niente può fargli piacere. But to enjoy the positivity in every negativity is the capacity of a surgeon. Ma gioire della positività in qualsiasi situazione, anche negativa, è la qualità del Sahaja Yogi. The negativity doesn't exist. It's an ignorance. Perché la negatività non esiste, perché è solo ignoranza. Also it's not ignorance, which is because ignorance also doesn't exist. If everything is the all pervading power, then how can there be ignorance? Ma non è neanche ignoranza, perché se tutto è il potere onnipervadente, allora come può esistere anche solo l'ignoranza? But supposing uh, in the folds of this power, if you hide, run away, you will say that there is negativity. Ma se voi vi nascondete dalle cascate di questo potere, voi allora vi troverete nella negatività. Like you hide yourself in a cave, close it properly and say that there is no sun. Come se voi vi chiudeste in una caverna per benino e diceste, beh, qui non, non c'è il sole. So those people who cannot become collective are either right-sided or left-sided, but more left-sided. E così quelle persone che non riescono a diventare collettive sono o di lato sinistro o di lato destro, ma soprattutto sono di lato sinistro. But left-sided people can be collective in negativity. Però le persone di lato sinistro riescono a essere collettive, ma nella negatività. This is, there is a very big fraternity of boots. C'è una grande fraternità di boots fra di loro. Uh, you see some drunkards sitting together. Per esempio ci sono degli ubriaconi, si siedono insieme. They are saying, see, there are so many problems, ecological problems. They are drunkards, all drunk. And there are problems of so, other kinds. When will this... End. E cominciano a parlare fra di loro, sono completamente ubriachi e dicono ah quanti problemi ci sono, ci sono problemi ecologici, problemi di qua, problemi di là. So the another one says, wait, 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 I have heard that the whole world is going to collapse very soon. <laughs> allora arriva un altro, dice, dicono quando finiranno questi problemi? Allora arriva un altro, dice sentite, sentite, ho, ho sentito proprio adesso che il mondo crollerà molto presto. Then the third one says, thank God, we are going to be collapsed, finished. E allora il terzo dice, ah, grazie a Dio, tutto finirà. Then fourth one says, but what will happen to our pubs? E il quarto dice invece, ma che succederà ai nostri pubs? They say, it's all right, if we are not existing, what does it matter? E l'altro dice, ma che importanza ha, tanto se non esistiamo non ha importanza. That's how the frater fraternity of the boots act. Ecco come agisce la fraternità dei boots. 
They cannot see fun at all. They cannot enjoy at all. Non riescono a vedere il gioco, non riescono a gioire di niente. And uh, they become very sort of think they are very meditative, they are some higher people, they are something superior in negativity. E cominciano a, a starsene da soli, come a pensare di essere delle persone superiori che se ne stanno sempre a meditare. Nella But negatività. The end of these people is that they become lunatics. Ma la fine di queste persone è che poi diventano lunatiche. While the end of the right side is they become idiotic. Mentre la fine dei lati destri è che finiscono per essere idioti. Uh, once I went to a lunatic asylum. Una volta sono andata in un manicomio. And uh, while going there I met a lady and she was quite all right. I mean I thought she was a quite all right woman so I started talking to her. E, e mentre stavo andando lì parlavo con una signora sembrava abbastanza a posto allora ho cominciato a parlarle. And she started talking very wisely, see, my brother-in-law is there and isn't it necessary that he should be helped and we should not do this, that, all kinds of things she was telling me. E lei, questa signora, ha cominciato a parlare a Shrimadaji dicendole molte cose, per esempio, ah, mio cognato sta lì, certo dovrebbe essere aiutato e così. Showing me as if she was very nice and kind and no one loves her. E si mostrava a Shrimadaji come se lei fosse molto saggia, molto gentile, mentre nessuno poi le voleva bene. And she said, I'm very insecure and this and that. E lei diceva, eh, io sono molto insicura, eccetera. Suddenly the doctor came in. E poi il dottore arrivò. And she started abusing him, shouting at him. I said, what's this? E lei cominciò a, a insultarlo, a strillargli addosso. E Shimbade gli disse, ma che succede? So, the doctor sent for people that catch hold of this woman. He told me she's the most violent lunatic. E allora il dottore mi disse, dice Shimbade gli, ma questa donna è la, è la lunatica più violenta che ci sia. And why are you talking to her? Perché sta parlando con lei? I did have a headache, but I didn't know she was a lunatic. Shimada gli dice, io avevo in effetti mal di testa, però non sapevo che fosse una lunatica lei. Maybe in my presence as Bhut might have a little bit run away and we're play, playing tricks, but you can see that clearly. Può darsi che alla mia presenza i Bhut se ne erano scappati momentaneamente, ma si poteva vedere chiaramente però. So this emotional attachment is too much and too emotionally to worry about somebody that, uh, you see, Uh, this is my child, this is my this thing, this is this and this is that. And all the time wasting your precious life in these things is not the way a Sahaja Yogi should live. E quindi questa attitudine di starsi sempre a preoccupare di qualcuno, essere sempre così, avere queste preoccupazioni, non è il modo in cui dovrebbe essere un Sahaja Yogi. If a Sahaja Yogi cannot become collective, then know that he is not a Sahaja Yogi. Se un saggio yogi non riesce a diventare collettivo, beh, sappiate che non è un saggio yogi. So, one has to know that this is the work of Bhairavnath within us. Così dovreste sapere che questo è il lavoro di Bhairavnath dentro di noi. And another work that he gives us light in darkness is that, that he, he destroys all the bhuts within us. Un altro lavoro che lui svolge e che porta luce dentro di noi è quello per cui lui distrugge i boots dentro di noi. And all kinds of bootish ideas. E tutte le idee bootish. And funny ideas about attachments. E distrugge tutte le strane idee sugli attaccamenti. And also the depressiveness. E la depressione. So today we are, I'm very happy that we are worshiping uh, Sri Bhairava, because he's very much connected with Ganesha. Così so, oggi sono molto contenta che uh, adoreremo Sri Bhairava, perché lui è anche molto connesso con Ganesha. As you know, Sri Ganesha is at the Muladhara, and while Bhairava moves on to the left side and goes to the right side. 
come sapete Shri Ganesha è, risiede nel Muladhara mentre Bhairava si muove sul lato sinistro e va a finire sul lato destro della so testa. all kinds of conditionings all kinds of habits can be conquered through the help of Bhairavanath e quindi ogni genere di condizionamento può essere risolto con l'aiuto di Bhairavanath in uh, Nepal we have a very huge big Bhairavanatha st uh, statue which is really Swambhu. In Nepal esiste una enorme statua di Bhairavanath che in effetti è uno Swayambhu. And people are more left-sided, so they are afraid of Bhairavanath. E la gente sono, è per lo più left side lì, per cui hanno paura di Bhairavanath. So if somebody has a bad habit, say, of stealing, they take him to the to in front of Bhairavanath and put his light there, make a flame. Per esempio, se qualcuno ha l'abitudine di rubare e va di fronte alla statua di Bhairavanath e mette come una fiamma. I mean the police takes them and uh, then they ask him now say before Bhairavanath, uh, confess it. Ah, lo portano davanti alla, alla statua di Bhairavanath e gli ordinano di confessare il furto. And they confess. E lo confessa. What wrong they have done. So he protect us also from doing wrong things, sly things like thieving. E così lui ci protegge impedendoci di fare delle cose sbagliate come rubare per esempio. Whatever we think we can do secretly can be hidden, but you cannot hide it from Bhairavanath. Qualsiasi cosa che noi cerchiamo, pensiamo di poter fare segretamente, non potrà essere segreto a if you, Bhairavana. If you don't change, then he exposes you completely. E se voi non cambiate, lui a un certo momento vi svergogna pubblicamente. That's how he has exposed all the horrible false gurus. Ed è così che lui ha eh, svergognato tutti i falsi guru. So today we are here to, uh, to worship this great deity of Bhairavanatha who incarnated on this earth later on. E quindi oggi siamo qui per eh, venerare Bhairavanatha che si è incarnato su questa terra più tardi. Ultimately as Mahavira also. Si è incarnato come Mahavira. So he stands on the gate of hell. Quindi lui sta alle porte dell'inferno. And stops people from falling into hell. E, e impedisce alla gente di cadere nell'inferno. But if you want to go to hell, if it is your desire, it's your willpower like that working, that I should go to hell, then he says, all right, you can go. Ma se il vostro desiderio è di andarvene all'inferno, lui vi dice, prego, prego. But as you know, now the hell is also full of people. Ma voi sapete che l'inferno è anche pieno di gente. So, it's better that we should try to fight our negativity and become fun loving, enjoying others, loving others. E così è molto meglio che noi cominciamo a gioire della, della collettività e diventare eh, amorevoli e gioiosi, divertenti. Not worrying about uh, what others are doing to you, but only thinking what good you can do to others. Senza starsi a preoccupare di quello che gli altri fanno a noi, ma invece preoccupandosi di che cosa possiamo fare noi per gli altri. So, today's uh, special puja for Bhairavanath we offer. Quindi oggi offriamo questo puja speciale a Bhairavanath. To give us a sense to laugh, to enjoy, to have fun. Perché ci dia il... perché ci ispiri a gioire, a divertirci. E a essere amorevoli. May God bless you all. Che Dio vi benedica tutti.
you have not unmuted it. You have to start again. Sorry about that. Let's just put on a bandan and raise our kundalinis, or rather raise our kundalini and put on a bandan if we would like to now and haven't done so before. Just before we do our meditation. Jai Shri Mataji. I'm just going to start with um, the mantras of Sri Bhairava. And because this is William Blake's birthday, and we know from Sri Mataji that Bhairava incarnated as William Blake as well, and also as Sri Mahavira. First, we will say the mantra, I will say the mantras of Sri Bhairava, just in English, and also the ones of Sri Mahavira, again, just in English, in honor of William Blake, and the fact that Sri Mataji has told us before that, um, in fact, the deities have all had to learn English. But first, let's just say the mantra to Sri Bhairava. Om Twameva Sakshat, Sri Bhairava Sakshat, Sri Adi Shakti Mataji, Sri Nyamala Devi, Namo Namaha. O Divine Mother, you are verily Sri Bhairava. Salutations to you. You are the great all-powerful Bhairava. Ever young, you appear as a young boy. The seer, perfect and powerful, adorned with skeletons, the dark-hued lord of death and time, the fire of destruction, lord of the divine union, the almighty lord endowed with great power, the lord of divine bliss, bright like the sun, the Lord of absolute purity, the mighty Lord who appears as a child, the celibate youth, the Lord of all cremation grounds and cemeteries, the ancient Lord, the Lord of ever youthful vigor, the supreme bliss, the Lord who pleases the gods, the bliss of divine knowledge, the supreme ecstasy, the nectar of divine bliss. Sakshat Shri Adi Shakti Mataji Shri Nirmala Devi Namo Namaha. And the mantra of Shri Mahavira Om Twameva Sakshat Shri Mahavira Sakshat. Shri Adi Shakti Mataji, Shri Nimala Devi Namo Namaha. O Divine Mother, you are verily Shri Mahavira. Salutations to you. You are the one who makes us progress and evolve. The great hero, the one who was born into an illustrious family, the Muni, the detached one, the Sadhu, the ascetic, victorious, the one that gives protection, the one who has many forms, the destroyer of Chanda and Munda, the one who cannot be surpassed, upon the lotus, the one within whom the goddess Amber resides, perfection and plentitude personified, 
the protector of the subconscious. Pure, the God of purity. The one who makes all things auspicious. Universal peace, the protector of nature. The Lord of Dharma, detached from all garments. The one who is the whole, totally personified. Sakshat Sri Adi Shakti Mataji. Shri Nyamala Devi Namo Namaha. Let's put our hands out to Sri Mataji. And as Mother's explained, putting our hands to Sri Mataji can be our mantra. If in our hearts we are asking her as the Kundalini to cleanse us, and we know that it is only Mother in her form of the motherly kundalini within us that actually cleanses us and puts us into thoughtless awareness and into the sasrara. And she's explained that we can put our attention onto mother's kundalini, onto her own kundalini, and also onto the collective kundalini. So let us put our attention onto Mother's Kundalini, the collective Kundalini of all the Saj yogis around the world, who in these last two weeks have been having their attention on the UK thanks to the Porchester Hall programs and to William Blake's birthday. And also that Srimatishi's photo has been seen physically, not only online, but this time all over London. And how many seeds have been planted in the hearts of people all over London who saw Mother's picture. And the joy that we've been feeling of this collective experience of so many kundalinis having their attention on Sri Mataji. Let us sit for a few minutes in silence. Let's enjoy Shrimataji's, our mother's vibrations coming from all of us and everybody all over the world and all over London. So we support their Kundalinis.
we enjoy their kundalinis. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for making us candles that can enlighten other candles and spread the light of Sai Yoga. Srimataji. Amen. Verily, you are Sri Maha Lakshmi, Sri Maha Saraswati, and Sri Maha Kali, the essence of the three qualities, the Kundalini, the primordial Shakti, Divine Mother, Immaculate Goddess, we surrender to you. Amen. Verily, you are Sri Kalki, the primordial Shakti, Divine Mother, Immaculate Goddess. We surrender to you. Amen. Verily, you are Sri Kalki, the Goddess of the Sahasrara Chakra, the, the Divine Mother, who gives spiritual liberation, Immaculate Goddess. We surrender to you. Jai Sri Mataji. Shall we tie up our kundalinis? So now we go on to the next bit, which is um, a little bit um, of a um, reading about the men of God, which Sri Mataji has spoken about and as um, something that Blake prophesied about. And um, you will see that the picture used for the beginning of this is one which Blake did, which looks like... Um, the scholars say it looks like Blake and he has a light in his hand and he's going through a door, which one some people feel is going down into the dark recesses of the left side. So he's very much portraying himself as Sri Bhairava. 
um, Nitin, we can have the next bit um, of the presentation. William Blake's prophecy about the men of God In Milton by William Blake, we find another prophecy that Sri Mataji mentions in her lectures even more often than the prophecies about her residences. We are referring to William Blake's prophecy about the men of God becoming prophets with powers to make other prophets. In her lectures, Sri Mataji often said that William Blake prophesied that men of God would become prophets and would have powers to make other prophets. This subject is related to Sri Mataji's residences in the UK. Sri Mataji has explained that the men of God are the same as the seekers of truth. The point is that the enlightenment of the Kundalini of the seekers of truth takes place through our mass self-realization. In the UK, Sri Mataji started this process in the Surrey Hills, initially with just a small number of Sahaj Yogis. Later, when Sri Mataji started Sahaja Yoga public meetings at Caxton Hall in London, all the Sahaj Yogis were invited to participate in the process. In no time, Sahajis were also giving realization to the new people. In biblical language, we could say that Sahaja Yogis were becoming prophets and making other prophets. This is what William Blake prophesied. This prophecy brings to mind a particular saying of Sri Mataji's about the candle. Sri Mataji often reminds us that once a candle is enlightened, it can enlighten other candles. It is in this prophetic book entitled Milton, or to use its full title, Milton, a poem, that Blake wrote his famous hymn called Jerusalem. At the top of this image from Milton, in Blake's own handwriting, the hymn starts with that well-known line, And did those feet in ancient time. At the bottom of this image, again in Blake's handwriting, 
we read the biblical quote, Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. Numbers 11th chapter 29th verse Book of Numbers, chapter 11, verse 29. The last line of the hymn Jerusalem is a line not set to music and therefore a line that we never sing. It is a quote from the Bible in which Moses says to his disciple Joshua, Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. In a modern version of the Bible, this is translated as, I wish the Lord would give his spirit to all his people so that everyone could be a prophet. In the Bible, chapter 11 of the book of Numbers, we can read the full story of a rare event during which the prophet Moses created 70 prophets at the same time. That is what in Sahaj Yoga we call giving our mass self-realization. Later, Joshua reported to Moses that two people who were not present when Moses gave the experience of collective self-realization had also started to prophesy. Moses was pleased and exclaimed, Would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets! This event is described in verses 24 to 29 of chapter 11 of the book of Numbers. The Pentecost, an illustration by William Blake of Edward Young's Night Thoughts. Before his ascension, Jesus promised his disciples what became known as the experience of Pentecost. Jesus said, Wait for the gift my father promised, for John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 1 verses 4 to 5 The experience of Pentecost makes it very clear that before prophesying we need to receive the wind of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the Spirit on top of our heads. In Sahaj terms, we would say that before prophesying we need to get our experience of self-realization. The following extract from the Book of Acts of the Apostles confirms this view. Acts chapter 2 Verses 1 to 4 and verse 17. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. In the last days God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. William Blake prophesied that men of God would become prophets. William Blake foresaw that the building of the New Jerusalem would take place in England through our mass self-realization. See how the lady on the right of this picture is touching the sasrara of the central figure and the whole scene is set in a Stonehenge-like landscape in England. This painting is plate number 100 and it concludes the long illustrated poem by William Blake entitled Jerusalem, the Emanation of the Giant Albion.
In 1980, Sri Mataji visited Stonehenge in Wiltshire, England, UK. In the blossom time of Sahaja Yoga, the seekers of truth, the men of God, are getting their self-realization en masse. They become prophets and they have powers to make other prophets, meaning that they can give self-realization to others. A Sahaja Yoga meeting of self-realization in India. In England, in the UK and all over the world, the seekers of truth are getting their self-realization en masse, as prophesied by William Blake. I wish that the Lord would give his spirit to all his people so that everyone could be a prophet. The Meaning of Becoming a Prophet When Blake wrote about men of God becoming prophets, he did not mean that the seekers of truth would become soothsayers or people able to foresee the future. In Blake's annotations to Richard Watson, Apology for the Bible in a series of letters addressed to Thomas Paine, he wrote, Prophets in the modern sense of the word, have never existed. Jonah was no prophet, in the, in the modern sense, for his prophecy of Nineveh failed. Every honest man is a prophet. He utters his opinion both of private and public matters. In another book that Blake wrote, in the Marriage of Heaven and Hell, the prophet Isaiah tells Blake, I saw no God, nor heard any, in a finite organical perception. But as I was then persuaded and remain confirmed that the voice of honest indignation is the voice of God, I cared not for consequences but wrote. Sri Mataji spoke at great length about the meaning of seekers of truth or men of God becoming prophets or becoming self-realized people. Here are just a few brief extracts from her talks. What is a prophet? A prophet is a person who can feel the all-pervading power of love. As the Prophet Muhammad has said, your hands will speak and also they act. You can easily see that when you put your hand towards the Kundalini of a person who is a seeker. You will see the Kundalini rise. When you put the Vishuddhi fingers in the ears, tilt your head back and call out Allahu Akbar, Akbar means Virata, then the Vishuddhi chakra opens instantly.
Uh, Jesha Mataji, <clears throat> so this year we are um, releasing this new book about William Blake and Sahaja Yoga, very much based on the teachings of Sri Mataji. That's more than 80% of the book is that, you know, some quotes of Blake as well and paintings. But uh, Sahaja Yogi asked me to answer this question which is where exactly is that quote of Sri Mataji in, in Blake's writings? Where can we find that? This is a question we have always had in Sahaj. I remember one day going to Sri Mataji's house there at Brompton Square, and I brought with me the whole uh, collection of Blake's writings in a single big volume, and uh, I was thinking of asking her to show me exactly where it is, that quote, uh, that famous quote of Mother that... Uh, William Blake, William Blake prophesied that men of God would become prophets with powers to make other prophets. So where can we find that quote of William Blake, that quote of Sri Mataji in the writings of William Blake? And uh, suddenly I felt something inside of me saying, it might not be very polite for me to asked the direct question to mother with the book in my hand as if mother has a duty to prove prove herself or something you know and i felt um, this is really not very polite of me so although i brought the book and i was all prepared to ask that question it's a question we all had in those days i said nothing and then she looked at me and she said you are as he said, you are living there at Shalsham Road, the place, you know, so important for William Blake, a place that um, William Blake prophesied about, that uh, center, you know, in Lambeth, you know, the, the Sahaj Yoga Ashram of Shalsham Road. And uh, do you realize, Louis, you are living there with a very great expert in William Blake, uh, Gr Mr. Graham Pottinger, you know? Oh, yes, yes, you know, that's interesting. I really know he's such a great uh, expert in William Blake. And somehow mother answered the question for me and solved my problem in a very elegant way without me having to perhaps ask a very direct question, not so polite. So in the evening as I arrived home, I picked up the book of Blake and went straight to Graham. Graham, show me here on the book of Blake, where exactly is that quote of mother? <laughs> you know, that the man of God would become prophets with powers to make other prophets, you know. And uh, Graham knew exactly what to say. He told me, stop there, Louis, stop, 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 slowly. You do realize this is not uh, a literal quote, isn't it? Because uh, in some talks, mother will say and explain this in certain words, the most usual words, but occasionally she explains this in different words, different words. So it's not a literal quote, you know. You, I mean, unless... If you are looking for a literal quote, you are not on the in the right direction, you know. So don't look for that literal quote, you know. And then, of course, uh, it was very easy to find because we don't need to go very far. As we already said it today, we'll say it one last time. In the preface to Milton, after that famous song, Jerusalem, Blake says that. He wrote that, which is a Bible quote to, to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. So now, why does mother add an extra little bit saying, with powers to make others prophets? Because mother is giving us a synthesis, a great uh, summary, a tremendous, you know, deep explanation of the whole book of Milton in one sentence. <clears throat> and even if you read the chapter of Numbers in the Bible, that uh, chapter 11, you will see that Moses on that occasion gave realization to 70 people en masse, which is something extraordinarily rare. This would not happen in the ancient days. Moses, <clears throat> Moses was in trouble. The rubble, this is what it says there on the book, on chapter 11, the rubble was complaining, was protesting, was rebelling. They were like murmuring souls, you know. They were making complaints and demands. They wanted better food in the desert, can you imagine? They wanted meat to eat. They wanted all sorts of things. They were groaning and crying. And Moses, you know, prayed to God for a solution. And the solution was, you know, 
if you can't handle those people alone, you need more profits to help you. So why not you make a list of 70 people, your best 70 people, and put the spirit that is in you up, upon them. This is the idea of, and then they shall prophesy. So the idea of putting, of making them prophets is you take the spirit that is in you and you put it upon them. But those people had to prepare and come to the tent on a certain day to receive that experience. And in fact, two of them never turned up because they were still very busy doing their jobs. You know, they were selling, buying and selling and uh, bartering. <clears throat> this was their, their job there in the desert. And so they never turned up on time, but uh, they had been appointed and listed on the list for, for the experience. And uh, they started to prophesy all the same. So Joshua came and reported this to Mo to Moses. Joshua was the main, the young disciple of Moses and said, my Lord, Moses, stop them because they never turned up to the tent. And now they have started to prophesy as well. And Moses said, that's all right, you know, would to God that all the Lord's people were prophets. So even they got the experience somehow or another. So this was... Uh, a very rare event of almost realization described in the Bible. And uh, the Pentecost, we also mentioned, is another event of the same nature. So those events were very rare, but uh, now it's the blossom time. And Sri Mataji, like a genius, was able to explain all of this in one single sentence. You know, she gave us the whole summary of the book of Milton. So there you are. It's easy to find. And it's not a literal quote. It's more than a paraphrase because it's also Sri Mataji's own explanation of a great master telling us in one sentence the whole meaning of the Milton. So that, uh, thanks to the Sajogi who asked me to go into this detail. So now we could move to the next item. Oh, yes, this is a very interesting one. Sri Mataji's visit to William Blake's grave. She did that on the 22nd of November. And then she gave, uh, the day before, I'm sorry, on the 21st of November. And then on the 22nd, it's the last day before she was going to India. So on that year, Sri Mataji celebrated William Blake's birthday by going to visit Blake's grave. Then she talked about her experience of visiting William Blake's grave. She gives us the postcode EC1 in case we are interested to go there. And she describes the whole uh, situation there at Blake's grave. It's very interesting, you know. And then she also says many, many other interesting things. It's a it's an amazing talk. It's a talk, again, it's a celebration of Blake's birthday which mother had to do a few days before the actual birthday because she was going to India the next day, as she says in the talk. Mm -hmm. So I suggest we listen to it. It's very short, the clip. It's only three minutes. But in those three minutes, mother explains everything about the dismal situation of William Blake's grave. Mother knows exactly where Blake is buried, and she can see that people are walking over his body. And Sri Mataji is really appalled at that situation, the lack of respect. How can people walk all over his body? Of course, people don't know where the exact location. That's why this is happening, because uh, the actual spot of William Blake's grave is not marked. It's, it was an unmarked grave at that time. And so this, uh, those three minutes of uh, Mother's talk are so precious, and they became the inspiration for the Saj Yogis to mark the actual location of William Blake. And hopefully in future, we will stop walking over his body. That's something mother was uh, very, very appalled and disappointed at that situation. So uh, let us listen to it. It's only three minutes long, so I would like you to please concentrate because it's a hard talk to understand because Shrimataji talks really very fast, so we need to pay maximum attention. Uh, I wonder if Nitin will play it for us, or...
now England has to become Jerusalem as promised by William Blake. But how many have any regard for William Blake? I was amazed. I wanted to find out his uh, um, burial place where he was buried and what was the tomb they erected for him. And in a forlorn place, somewhere easy one, in a most neglected place, he's laid down there, just neglected. It's so sad. Who thought of England to be Jerusalem one day, the holiest of all, is laid down there, neglected, everybody walking on his tomb, nobody respecting him. That's what England is today. But if William Lake had died in India, I can tell you this much, there would have been thousands sitting there, take it from me. Even today in India, a saint is respected, much more than the king and the queen, much more. Thousands would be there. It's a sign of our development, of our understanding of things. But we have such great seekers here that one day this country has to also become Jerusalem and where people will regard the highest thing as the Spirit, highest thing as the Divine vibrations or the Divinity, what we call the Ratambara Pragya. That's what day has to come. But people have to get out of their mental projections where they are still entangled. I have worked the hardest in England. For the last days, nowhere, not in, 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 in India or anywhere, because I know England is very important, it is the heart of the universe. But the seekers in England are lost quite a lot and we have to bring them back to their normal senses and make them understand their responsibility. Because if the heart fails, everything will fail and the whole circulation of this has to go through heart. Luckily, my husband was elected and elected and elected four times and now we'll be here all together 16 years, 16 solid years I'll be working in this country all together. So I hope you people will realize how important it is to me to be in England and that's how we all in England should work very hard. The people who are not Sahaja Yogis must become Sahaja Yogis and the Sahaja Yogis must become real Sahaja Yogis and not just talking Sahaja Yogis, try to become discreet and this is when it will happen, people will see you, how great you have become and then only they will realize that it's the right path they have to follow. May God bless you. So, um, of course, this book that uh, is being launched today also to coincide with William Blake's birthday, it's also a book dealing with uh, something Sri Mataji mentions so many times in her lectures all over the world. I mean, Sri Mataji used to say that in America, in, in Australia, in New Zealand, wherever she went, she used to mention that William Blake prophesied about the residences, her residences, you know, the main one being, of course, at Brompton Square that William Blake prophesied about, but also mother's residence in the Surrey Hills, you know, mother was living there for a long time in a, in a very nice bungalow, you see, and she established the foundations of Sahaja Yoga there with a, a few number of people, and then there was the first uh, permanent ashram, which was at Shalsham Road. And William Blake, according to Shrimataji, um, prophesied about, about all those uh, three residences. It's uh, a very interesting subject that Shrimataji has explained so many times. And that's another part of the, this book you are launching. And uh, one thing Shrimataji said is that uh, Brompton Square, one of those residences that William Blake prophesied about, was actually a very miraculous place. And uh, many such yogis have had incredible experiences of something hard to explain, really the miraculous part of it. William Blake also mentioned great miracles about that place. So we are going to listen to some memories of uh, Sri Mataji's miracles at our London residence of Brompton Square. That will be... Uh, about 25 minutes, but um, 
It's a fact Srimataji asked us in England. In fact, this was a request of Srimataji, one of our last requests, is that we share all the experiences we had, you know, especially the ones related to William Blake and uh, the miracles at Brompton Square. It's one of those subjects that are very related to the prophecies of William Blake about Brompton Square. So if you don't, if you can excuse me, I will uh, relate some of my experiences at the Brompton Square. It's part of this subject of uh, Blake's prophecies about size yoga. I was hoping Nitin can play that one now. Uh, uh, my name is Luis Garrido, and uh, I first met Shri Mataji in 1982. And uh, today I've been asked to say a few words about uh, Brompton Square, which uh, was quite a miraculous place. There was always uh, some wonderful surprises happening there at, uh, Brom at Brompton Square. A lot of what was happening there, sometimes we feel Right, there was a little bit of building work taking place, renovation of the house, decoration, we went through those phases. But at all times, it was about uh, Sahaj Yoga, it was about vibrations, it was about uh, meeting Sri Mataji as our guru, really. The, the work was, uh, the building work and all that was there, no doubt, in the decoration, but that's by the way. Mat was constantly teaching us something about meditation, vibrations, uh, giving us a, a little lecture for all the ones, for all the people who were there. Now and again, Mat would call everybody up to the room, to a room, and uh, she would uh, give us a little lecture. You know, so she was constantly teaching us something about Saj Yoga. So it felt to me the the whole thing was a Maya. It was about everything was about Saj Yoga and about vibrations and. Uh, and this was something hard for us to understand, at least for me, because uh, vibrations are invisible, you don't see them. We can feel them, but uh, we're not used to be conscious of the vibrations. And so Mother would create sometimes some little incidents to help us understand the vibrations. And I remember one or two incidents like that, I would like to maybe mention those. One day, we had this brilliant idea, a couple of us, three of us in fact, to decorate a certain area of Mother's house that was a little bit rough, that area needed the new wallpaper. And uh, we knew Shimataji was going to go away for, for the day and for the night, because she had some international conference with RCP. She would only be back the next day in the morning, she said about 8 or 9 a.m. So we felt this is an ideal opportunity to create a little surprise. While Mad is out, we'll redecorate that area with wallpaper. So as soon as Mother left, we started on the job. Uh, maybe 10, 15 minutes later, Sir C.P. was back. He had forgotten some documents, so he came back. And he saw us, oh, what are you doing? Oh, we are doing some wallpapering, sir. Wonderful, but uh, make sure you have plenty of, uh, of spare rolls in case you need to redo it if something goes wrong, you know. Oh, yes, in fact, there's plenty of spares, there's no problem. And then he gave us a very important piece of advice. Uh, make sure there's no gap between the strips of paper. That's a very important point. point. Oh, sir, we would never do that. We know that, you know. If, if anything, we overlap the layers of paper. We'd never give a, leave a gap. You, you can't trust us, you know. Okay. A few minutes later, mother also came to the house. Sasipi was the first arrival that mother came out of the car and also went in. And uh, maybe Sassip was taking too long to find the papers. And when Mother came, she saw us, ah, so, I can see, so you are doing some old papering, isn't it? Then she told us something interesting. You know, don't leave any gaps between the layers of paper. Not that I mind, but Sassip, he likes things, you know, quite professionally, you know, so. No gaps between the, the paper. And um, so you are trying to give me a surprise, but fair enough, okay. The surprise will be if uh, by tomorrow the job is finished. That will be a nice surprise indeed. I'm still very surprised if when I return, you've managed to do it all, you know. By the time I arrive, that's it's still a great surprise, although I know you are doing it. Because, uh, in fact, she said, uh, 
if you want, take some coffee, you know. This was uh, out of the ordinary for mother to say, if you want, take some coffee. Because she used to say not to take coffee, you know, it's not good for the liver, you know. But in this case, she said, if you really need, take some coffee. Uh, it will still be a very nice surprise so long as you finish it, you know. So we did that. We took some coffee. We, we managed to finish the job. Mother then arrived. But mother didn't say a word about the wallpaper. And you're waiting for mother to say something like, oh, very nice, or I like it very much, or wonderful, or well done for finishing it, you know, on time, it's all done, no more mess, it's all finished. No, mother did not mention it, so we went to see her. Mother, you know, you have not mentioned the wallpapering, uh, do you like it? And she, she said, yes, yes, I like it very much, looks wonderful. Unfortunately, there's a little gap there in between the strips of paper, it's as if you saw that too, you know. But uh, not to worry. And we said, but mother, there is no gap whatsoever. We know there is no gap, mother. We checked it very carefully. We, you told us that. Even CCP told us the same, you know. And there is no gap at all, you know. And mother said, well, in that case, I better show you where the gap is. And we couldn't believe our eyes. Mother came and showed us the gap was there, quite big, you know, between two layers of paper, two strips of paper. We just couldn't believe it. Then someone told us, oh yes, this can happen, a shrinkage, you know, overnight. As it, it was unbelievable, we'll get it really. What a shock, you know. I think mother felt sorry for us, big disappointment. <laughs> so she said, you know what, you can uh, just, just pull the paper. If you pull it from both sides, you can uh, get rid of that gap. So mother started doing that to show us how it's done. And it was, you stood there in amazement looking at mother and doing this because uh, rationally speaking we felt this is too late, it's dry now. And nothing moved, nothing shifted. Mother was pulling the paper, pushing the paper, pulling nothing. It just wouldn't budge, you know. And then mother told us, what are you doing? Don't you give me a hand at least, you know. <laughs> there was two of us. One was very tall and I'm not that tall. So mother was push, uh, pushing the paper, I was pushing in the lower area. And that other chap, bigger, taller than I, was pushing above mother, you know. And three of us pushing the paper, pushing, pushing, pushing and pulling, nothing. It wouldn't budge a millimeter. So we told mother, mother, it's not working. You know, we've done enough, you know, it's very hard, it doesn't move, it's dry, it's too late. And mother said, oh, you really don't have any faith on vibrations, you see. Remember, it's not you who's pulling the paper, it's the vibrations. Really, it's the vibrations, but still, it didn't move. It doesn't budge, it's too late, it's dry, isn't it? <laughs> we tried hard, all of us, the three of us, and nothing happened, so... <laughs> yes, but mother said, you just don't get the point. It's the vibrations that uh, do everything, it's not us, you know. So mother left us, you know, and we felt, all right, let's have a nice lunch. Because we know what's going to happen here, we're going to... The solution is we strip it away, strip it down, and do it again. At least starting from the gap up to the end of the wall. There's nothing else we can do. We just need some courage so we have a nice meal. Uh, after the meal, all right, let's start, let's do this. We have to strip it again, of course, strip it all down and, and uh, let's find the place of the gap. We start from there. We couldn't find the place of the gap. <laughs> there was no gap. The gap disappeared. <laughs> Meanwhile, while you were having a nice lunch, the gap went. It looks like the vibrations took their time, but the vibrations did it, so... It was hard to see with our eyes, but the vibrations work, you know. So mother taught us an interesting lesson with the whole drama and the whole surprise, surprise. The big surprise is the paper moved by itself with the vibrations somehow. somehow. Uh, there were many incidents like this. I remember another one. This was... Um, uh, I think there was a leak in mother's bedroom somehow under the floorboards. So the carpenter came and uh, had to lift the floorboards. So we moved the mother's bed alone. He just shifted, shifted mother's bed away from the wall. He then lifted the carpet, then he lifted the, the, the floorboards, then the repair was done to the leak on the pipe. And then of course he put the floorboards back, some glue, some screws and nails. He put back the carpet and now all he had to do was to push the bed back to the wall. Except that the, the bed would not move. Now, he had pushed the bed out of the wall alone without any problem, no difficulty, but now pushing it back, the bed just wouldn't move. So I was passing through and he said, Louis, come and give me a hand. I need to move this bed. He said, it's very easy, don't worry. 
I moved it along. So now with two of us, this is easy peasy. So we starting push, pushing the bed, pushing the bed or pulling, you know, and the bed would not shift, you know, just wooden buds. And mother was there looking at us. Mother kept the central heating in our house quite high, really high. Mother is, comes from a tropical country, isn't it? Tro temperature, tropical temperature. So the temperature was pretty high in that room. And we were pulling the bed and we were both sweating, me and the other yogi you now. It was unbelievable, but the bed just wouldn't shift, you know. It was a combination of trying so hard and the temperature in the room and mother was looking at us and we were dripping in sweat and pushing the bed and nothing it has moved, you know. So we stopped and uh, of course I tried to find a rational explanation for this. I needed a rational explanation, so I told to the carpenter, such yogi, you might have uh, put a screw on the, you might have screwed the bed to the floor by mistake. I mean, it went berserk, you know, how can you say anything like this? I'm a professional, I would never screw or nail the bed to the floor, you know. All right, I'm just trying to find out an a reason, you see. Wait a minute, did you glue the bed to the floor by mistake? <laughs> what? What, over mother's carpet? I would never glue the bed. <laughs> oh my God, don't say things like this. <laughs> you know, he, and what was looking at us, you know, he was sweating and having a little argument. I'm only trying to find a rational explanation, you know. So I came up with another idea. Oh, it's the weight of these curtains. The, there were so many big curtains over the bed and the curtains were very big and heavy. It must be the curtains, you know. So mother came and took the curtains from the bed. These curtains were very heavy and she had one set of curtains in one arm and another set of curtains in the other arm. So now we're trying without the weight of the curtains. This is going to be easy peasy. We push the bed again and the bed doesn't shift, you know. And we're just dripping in sweat and looking at each other and looking at mother and feeling, what is happening here? But the other side yogi was subtler. You remember, you remember, this is uh, some vibrational problem. We're trying too hard, we're trying by brute force, maybe you should have uh, given it a bandan, maybe, you know. So he told mother, mother, can you do a little miracle for us like you did last time, you know, that time you could not move that piece of wood. You touch it with one finger and the whole thing went, you know. If you could do a similar miracle again here, it looks like we need some help. <laughs> and mother said, well, I don't have a finger, as you can see, because the arms were full of, of curtains, curtains trying to keep them off the floor. And then mother said, maybe I can just about touch it with my knee, maybe. And she did, in fact. As, while you were pushing it, mother touched the bed just very lightly because she was standing on one leg with the curtains on her arms and she touched the bed just for a second with, the, with her knee while we were pushing on the bed, just boom, went all the way to the wall as if, uh, you know, on uh, moving on wheels or something. We thought, ah, the vibrations do everything and we're trying so hard, trying the hard way without using the vibrations. But uh, Mother did that uh, interesting miracle for us. So. The message was sinking in that the vibrations do everything. Uh, rationally, we come up with all rational ideas that don't work, but the vibrations work. Um, th there were many episodes like this. I wish I had written them down. Uh, but, the, but there's a certain uh, episode that took place. I don't need to write that down. That one is unforgettable for me. Uh, I, I was living at Sasha Broad in those days, so a message came by phone. If anyone uh, is free and wants, wants to come to Mother's house at Brompton Square, come and give her help. Mother needs some, some jobs need doing, you know. So I went. I didn't know what the job was. The job was actually uh, to shift some furniture from the attic all the way to uh, a van that was outside to take all those items into storage. So it, there were some little pieces of furniture, some objects, but mainly there were some big boxes they had called um, uh, tea chests, you know, they're wooden boxes with some uh, metal uh, metal uh, structures on the, on the sides to make them stronger. They can take a lot of weight. And those tea chests, you know, were full of, uh, we tried to lift them, it was unbelievable. He said, don't tell me this is full of lead, you know. And in fact, we noticed they were full of books and full of crockery and full of uh, cutlery. It really was unbelievably heavy. Now, Shimataji told us, if possible, 
do this very fast, you know, maybe in half an hour you should finish that job. She had so much to do. Next day she was going on an international Sahaj tour, traveling for giving realization. Would help very much to get the task done off the list, you know, and take that stuff to storage. And she said also, you need to be careful of burglars here because there have been uh, some problems with thieves and burglars and robberies in this area. It's been targeted very much, so uh, don't use the front door. Don't keep the front door open, that's very dangerous. Try and go from the basement, you know, under, under the ground floor there's a basement, there's a kitchen there. And then there was some little uh, metal steps going up from the basement to the level of the street, so to say. So that was the route. So it's quite a difficult route, you know, because you're coming from the attic, you'd have to go all the way down to the basement, then up those little steps, then into the road, and the van was on the other side of the road, parked there. And mother told us, at any rate, don't do it when it becomes dark. It's very dangerous, these robbers, these crooks, these thieves, you know, you are not safe, you know. Please make sure you do it before sunset, you know. It was quite a long time still before sunset, but the problem is the boxes were so heavy. And mother told us this is a very easy job, you can do that in 20 to 30 minutes, you know, very easy. Our experience told otherwise, we could not lift the boxes, you know. But there was a certain time pressure, you know, we needed to do this fast. So the other side, Yogi said, we can't afford to waste time, two of us taking a box at the same time. Each one will take a box, you know. But it's not going to be easy because it's so heavy and you don't want to scratch the wallpapers or scratch the carpets or do any damage and we have such a difficult route, you know. So we did the box each, you know, and we were blasted, absolutely blasted. It's as if the whole box was full of lead, you know. And so we went back to the kitchen and sat down there, took a cup of tea and mother comes and sees us. Oh, you finished, well done, well done, that was fast. See, I told you to be very fast. I said, Mother, we only did one box, it's, it's unbelievable, unbelievably heavy. You just, you can't even lift these boxes. Oh no, it's not that bad, it's not that, they actually, actually they're very light, if you knew, you know, they're really very light, very light. It's an easy job, we can do that in less than half an hour. So encouraged by Mother's words, we gave it a second attempt, you know. And the same, we took another box each down to the van and that's it. There was a, there was a Saj Yogi guarding the van, he was the strong big guy. He was set aside to stay there and keep an eye on the van, you know. <laughs> He's, he was the, <laughs> the guard, you know. We, the two of us were in charge of taking the stuff. After taking one more box, we went back to the kitchen for another cup of tea. This is it, I mean, how can we do this and finish before sunset, you know. So many of those big boxes, you know. And as we were sitting down and relaxing, mother arrives the second time. Ah, all right, now at last you made, you've done it, you know. Well done, you know. Now mother just did one, bo one more box each, you know. It's very, very heavy. And again, mother says, it's not heavy at all, you know. It's really not heavy, don't worry about that, you know. So we, we carried on, you know. In the end, I think it was by 9 p.m. when we managed to see mother told us not to finish, to finish before, this is, in the, this is winter time. So in winter time, you know, it's dark already by four or five o'clock and uh, 9, 9 p.m. more or less we finished this job. That's as long as it took. And so we, we got in the van, we put the, the, the key in the ignition and the key broke inside the van, inside the ignition. That's it. We cannot move the van now, we broke the key inside the ignition. So we went back to mother <laughs> and mother said, see, this is why I tell you. Don't do it in the night, it's very dangerous. There's been some problems in this area with robbers, thieves and burglars and criminals and crooks, you know, it's very bad. We said, mother, uh, mother said, I think it's much safer if you bring it all back. <laughs> now this was impossible. <laughs> Bringing it back is even harder because now it's up the hill. You have to go first down to the basement and then to the top of the house in the attic. It took us, uh, I don't know, four or five hours to do that job with great difficulty. And now we are exhausted. How are we going to take it all back? So we told mother, mother, there's an easy way. We spend the night, the three of us on the van. It'll be fine. And I said, no way, mother said. You are not spending the night in the van, these guys. They'll take you in the van and you too. You'll never, 
th these guys they'll take you to. You'll be gone. <laughs> you know, it's very dangerous. You cannot s uh, sleep the night in the van over my dead body. No way. You are not going to sleep there. All right. So, uh, mother, can you please give us some solution, some miracle? You know, because it's going to be impossible to to bring all this this back again. You know. I said, no, no, remember, I told you, it's very light, you know, you have nothing to worry, just do it, you can do that in half an hour, you know. That is impossible, it took us four or five hours, you know, how can you do it in half an hour, and now it's up the hill and we are tired, you know. We took another cup of tea, and then we decided, okay, let's start, you know. at least we'll do our best. I saw the other side yogi picked up a box, and he ran away with it, I said, okay, he was lucky. There was one empty box. I didn't know there was one empty box in the lot, in the whole lot. I picked up a box, and oh, that's empty too. I thought, because no wait. So I ran up the rim to catch him, trying to catch him, you know, and we took it upstairs in a second. We just ran with that box. We came down again. That was lucky. Yet another empty box for him, and he ran away with it. I, oh my God, another empty box for me. And I ran up trying to catch him, you know. And this is going well, you know, but you know, we didn't, I didn't think there was even one single empty box in the whole lot, they were all full of stuff. And we came down, oh, another empty box, another empty box, another empty box, you emptied the whole, they were all empty, as far as it, we could say, you know, and we did the job in 20 to 30 minutes. But there was one thing we did that I forgot to say now, this is the point. When Shimataji said that the miracle she was giving us is that, you know, it's best if you just do it, it's not hard, you know, it's not hard, you know. She did not give us the miracle that she was, what we wanted was the miracle we can, uh, you know, find a solution or sleep in the van. The only miracle she gave us was that, you know, we remember to use the vibrations. To, uh, to me, this is the real miracle, because before starting the job, we gave, we gave bandans, we asked Mother again to help us, we did, uh, we did some mantras also to Sri Anumana and to Sri Ganesha to remove the obstacles, and suddenly the boxes were empty somehow, it felt as if they were empty. This was the point Mother was constantly teaching us about vibrations, how, how vibrations do everything. Um, I mean, so many situations like this. Uh, Mother was kept explaining about vibrations. For instance, um, one day she said, this little corner here, the vibrations are not right. I think what you could do is to give it another coat of gilding. And there were quite a few people coming that day to the house, so there's plenty of brushes. So the idea is we divide this into little sections. Every person paints a little section or with gilding, with gold and the vibrations will lift up, you know, this was mother's idea. But my brain said otherwise, I said, this gilding is perfect, it's immaculate. Whether you give another coat or not, it will look exactly the same, it's a waste of time. And paint, you know, what's the point? So I didn't feel like I was given a little section to do out, out of that area. And I felt, you know what, I'm not going to do my section. And no one is going to notice because it's immaculate, this work, this job is perfect. I mean, whether you give a second coat or third coat or not, there's no difference. So I didn't do that little area which was assigned to me. To me. I just relaxed, took some tea, enjoyed myself, chatted in the kitchen. Uh, mother came and she noticed, ah, vibrations are fantastic, except this corner here, it's still not there. Who was in charge of that corner? <laughs> it was me. <laughs> I didn't do that one. And I told Mother the truth. I thought it was perfect, there was no need to do it again. <laughs> mother said, yes, but on vibrations, you need it doing again, you know. You know, it's not fair on the other people. Everybody did their, did their, their task, their, except for you, you know. It's not fair on the other people, you know. Why don't you give it the coat there? All right, so then Mother said, now I'm going to give a nice talk to all of you at the same time. You better finish your corner, then you can come. So I knew I'm going to miss the talk, because this takes a couple of hours to do that corner. So I remember, somehow I remember then the vibrations at last, the idea came to me. I gave it a bandan, I did a little prayer to Mother, Mother, please allow me to do this very, very quick, so that I don't miss the talk, because I wanted to hear what Mother was saying to all of us. But uh, Mother must have heard my prayer, because I was able to paint that corner. 
In fact, in 20 minutes, which otherwise would have taken me a couple of hours at least, if not more. And uh, Shimatashi decided to sit in a different place from the usual. So I missed maybe the first five minutes of the talk, but I could hear it. I was not there, sitting down in front of her, listening to the talk, but where I was, I could hear every word Mother was saying. And Mother even, even sat in a different place from, from the usual, so I could hear it, you know. So I felt, what an amazing miracle that uh, I was able to paint this in 20 minutes and still hear everything Mother was saying, because after 20 minutes I went and uh, sat down with the others. And uh, Mother was so right, you know. She felt it on vibrations that area had not been done, you see. She could feel it, you know. So the whole point is not, we're not decorating for the sake of decorating. Sometimes the decoration is done for vibratory reasons that it's beyond my understanding. I could give maybe another example of this uh, idea of vibrations and decoration. Uh, one day Sri Mataji told us, you know, you know, that area downstairs had no furniture at all, it was totally empty. And this happened like this. Uh, there, I think Sri Mataji had, um, there was a diplomatic function there in our house, lots of people came. And Sri Mataji took all the furniture, wherever it was not needed, to one room upstairs where everybody was meeting. So that there was plenty of uh, settees and armchairs and, you know, so the people could sit comfortably. So that area downstairs became totally empty, not a single piece of furniture there. And one day Sir CP came from work and seeing that he said, that's quite nice. You know, totally open, lots of space, people can, uh, you know, walk and move freely. If you have a lot of people coming, they can uh, meet here and mingle and talk, you know. It's not a bad idea, in fact. Let's keep it like this. So he said that to Sri Mataji. And Sri Mataji left it for a while like that. But then one day Sri Mataji felt, uh, if, we if we decorate this in a really, really nice way, CCP would probably say, oh, this looks very nice. Let's keep it like this. So the challenge now was to do something totally different, but very, very nice something that uh, would be totally different, you know. So Sri Mataji uh, asked us all to bring some furniture from the several places in the house, any room that had furniture, we were bringing it down all the way down to that uh, ground level, ground, ground floor. And, uh, you know, so much furniture came up and down, you know, we were all, it was like uh, going to the gym, having a big workout, we were having fun. It was really fun. <laughs> But uh, unfortunately, many combinations of the furniture were, were, were tested, you know. Nothing worked, you know. In the end, uh, Mata said the vibrations are not there. It's not quite that, you see. It's not working. So let's take it all upstairs again. So all the furniture was taken back again to the, to the top floor. We had a massive workout. It helped us to work together with each other. Very often in Mata's house, we're working separately, individually. And there we were all working as a team. And we had great fun. And we were really enjoying Vibrations was, were strong, really. But the um, outcome, the results were not achieved. And I remember my brain telling me, but Mother is like an oracle, like a prophet. Everything she says happens. She knows everything. Why didn't she know what's the exact combination of furniture that works? Why did she get it all wrong? And, uh, you know, it tried so many things and nothing worked, you know? Although we had great fun, but still, you know. But next day, mother decided to try again. So again, the whole furniture starts coming down from all different rooms, you know, going up and down. And suddenly, mother says, ah, that's it. Suddenly, it hit that point of vibrations, the combination or the location where the furniture was being put. Something was just perfect. And she said, wow, this is it, you know. And we all felt it. It was like, Whoosh, the vibrations, we all knew, this is it, this, we've done it at last, it's incredible, you see. It's done. And then I said, there's only one last thing now to do. Let's see, what's the opinion of Louis? Louis, that's me, you know. Let's, so long as Louis thinks it's good and looks good, I think we're done here for the day. <laughs> I really felt on the spot, you know. I wonder if Mother knew what I've been thinking, you know. <laughs> but uh, I said, why me, you know. Why are you asking me, mother, you know, I'm not an expert in decoration, I'm not an artist, just a lawyer, you know. These people here, some of them are artists, you could have asked them instead, you know. No, no, it's your opinion we want, you know. 
but I'm not an artist, I'm a lawyer. Precisely, Sarsip is also a lawyer, so that's why I want your opinion. Oh, mother, you know, vibrations are amazing, this is great, this is perfect, there's no need to change it, you know. All right, so I think Sarsip is going to like it because, uh, she said, because this is not an ambassador's home, you see. This is uh, the, the place of Sri Lakshmi, this is the character of this place. And when you make it very nice, very welcoming, very pleasant for the guests, you know, it actually gives vibrations. And SOCP is going to like this. It's probably going to tell us that uh, let's keep it like this, <laughs> you know, so it stayed. I think SOCP liked it because that arrangement stayed and it gave vibrations. We knew that it was correct when it gave those powerful vibrations. And um, the brain had to learn this lesson that even mother is playing with vibrations. Not just us, we were also playing with vibrations, but Mother too was playing with vibrations, playing with the, how we react to vibrations, and we all felt the vibrations on that occasion when the, somehow the combinations of that uh, style of decoration was perfect. It was incredible, very beautiful. And uh, this was a common theme at Mother's house. It was all about vibrations. Sometimes Sri Mataji would ask us, because I was living at Shalsham Road, How's everybody there at Shelsham Road? Oh, yes, yes, everybody is well except for one person, you know. Ah, what's wrong with him? Oh, he's been in bed for a week. Why didn't you tell me? Because I'd been going to mother's uh, house on a regular basis, but I never told mother he was ill. Somebody could have told me that he's ill, you know. Oh, mother, he told me not to tell you, you know. What? He told you not to tell me? Yes. Somehow he feels ashamed that if he's ill, it must be something wrong he did on his vibrations and he doesn't want you to know. But he's not getting better, is he? No. I mean, it's very worrying. He's been in bed for a week. He's not eating anything now. He can't eat. Why can't he eat? Oh, it's a very, very bad tooth. But why doesn't he go to the dentist? Well, some people think that uh, oh, it's just, you just give it a bandana and that's it, you know. I really, <laughs> Mother said, I think you are becoming fanatics, you know. <laughs> Mother said, you really are becoming fanatics. I may have said that it's important to give vibrations. I mean, if you have a bad tooth, by all means give it vibrations. But uh, the important thing sometimes is to use vibrations as prevention also. You could have given vibrations to the gums, to the teeth, you know, vibrating them with the... Uh, rubbing them with vibrated oil, vibrated salt, that's giving vibrations to the teeth, to the gums. I, I have said these things, but I never said that if you have a, a serious tooth disease, you don't go and treat it, you know. You are becoming like Sahaj fanatics or fundamentalists, you know. So mother said, uh, ring his wife and tell her, you know, here's the money. She gave, mother told me, got her handbag and took money of her handbag. Uh, here's some money, take the money to them. Maybe he doesn't have money, I hope, you know, uh, you know, to go to the dentist or for the taxi. But uh, I rang this wife from there and she said, she said, no need for money, I have plenty of money. You know, I save money, she said. I'll take him to the, to, the, to the dentist immediately by taxi. He was very weak, hadn't eaten well for a week. So, <clears throat> in this case, this was us misunderstanding the role of vibrations because uh, Indeed, it's good to give vibrations as prevention. It's also good to give it as a treatment. But that doesn't mean to say you become fanatics and you cannot uh, use the ordinary medicine as well when it's needed, because this was a serious uh, tooth infection, you know. It really needed to be treated. Thank God he was giving it vibrations, at least. The whole point is mother was talking to us, teaching us about Sahaj, teaching, talking about William Blake, so many things, you know. Um, the building work was there, but it was in the decoration. It was, by the way, it was about us improving ourselves and learning about meditation, meditating with Mother. Lots of things happened there. We had some sessions of meditation with Mother in person too. So, thank God for the decorating and building work. It gave us a justification to be there, because if Mother didn't have some uh, decorating going on in her house, how would she justify having, having so many Saj yogis hanging around? <laughs> Meanwhile, she was teaching us. And um, then it's our responsibility to them to teach others and to share th some things that Mother said we could learn from others, you know, who were there and taught us those things. So Mother had to be surrounded by her disciples somehow. And this gave her a very good excuse to have so many people around <laughs> at all times.
So now we, uh, Nitin, if possible, we move to the last item, which is music. But it's very special music. It's some uh, songs of William Blake that have been sung to Sri Mataji in previous years. So I hope you enjoyed that. I wonder if Nitin can hear me.
awake, oh England, awake, lovely emanation of Albion. Jerusalem, thy sister, she calls you on. Why must you sleep the sleep of death and close her from your ancient walls? Awake, oh England, awake. Thy hills and valleys felt her feet. Gently upon thy bosom move. Thy gates beheld sweet Zion's ways. Then was a time of joy and love. Awake, awake, O oh England, awake, O oh lovely emanation of Albion. Jerusalem, thy sister, she calls you on. Why must you sleep the sleep of death and close her from your ancient walls? Awake, oh England, awake. And now that the time returns again, our souls exult in London's towers. Receive the Lamb of God to dwell. In England's green and pleasant bowers, awake, awake, oh England, awake, oh lovely emanation of Albion, Jerusalem, thy sister, she calls you on. Why must you sleep the sleep of death? And close her from your ancient walls away, oh England away. Why must you sleep the sleep of death and close her from your ancient walls away, oh England away?
Thank you very much for joining us and meditating with us. And uh, that was the conclusion. Jai Shri